So most of you are probably familiar with the idea of the map versus the layout. Uh, the map has the geography. The layout is like a wrapper where you include the tools and information that help the viewer understand and interact with the map. Well, web maps need layouts too. In the ArcGIS world, we use the terms web map and web app, which sound inconveniently alike. Um, I like to think of the web app as like a layout, analogous to a layout in a print map. So on the screen here, you can see I have a web app that I built. Uh, similar to a print layout, it has a title, it has some pictures and text, um, but it's for a web map. So, you know, it also has navigation controls, it has pop-ups, you can uh, zoom to features or link out to websites, it's interactive. I made the map in ArcGIS Online, and I made the web app, all of these surround pieces, in ArcGIS Experience Builder. You can get to Experience Builder at experience.arcgis.com. Um, Experience Builder is one of several ArcGIS app building tools. Um, this is the one that I would recommend using if you want a lot of customization and control over the final product. So um, I'm gonna walk you through making the app with that we just looked at. We'll start with clicking Create New. Now there's a whole bunch of different templates in here. I'm actually gonna recommend the blank templates uh, because for myself, I find that it's a lot easier to um, understand what's going on, how everything's connected, if all of the pieces in there are things that I built myself. So we'll go with blank full screen today. The insert widget pane right here, it has all sorts of cool items you can add to your map. Um, I usually start with the map itself. I'll just drag it on there. And because we chose that full screen, uh, the, yeah, the full screen template, I can position this wherever I want. I can make it whatever size I want. I'm gonna make it full size. Because I have selected, the selected widget right now is the map. Over here, this properties pane shows the map widgets properties. And I will start by replacing that default map with my custom one. I'll click add new data and just do a search for the map I made earlier. Oops, spelled that wrong. There we go. And once that appears in the select data pane, I can add it to my map widget. I can also customize the initial view so I can control you know, where the map is zoomed to when people first open the page. Next, I'm gonna add a button widget. I'll just search for it here instead of scrolling through that list. And I'll choose one of these quick style options, but I'm also going to customize it further in the button pane. I'll change the text, and under advanced, I can change all sorts of font properties, make it larger, bolder. I'll remove that border, and uh, we'll make it pink to match our theme. So that's the regular state of the button. I can also edit the hover state of the button. You know, give it the same properties. And this time I'll make it pink on white instead of white on pink. Okay. Up here uh, on the top of the pane, I'll click the Style tab. And here I can, select, I can configure the size and position of this widget. I can do it with pixels or percentages. It really depends how you want that button to react as the screen size changes. Um, I am gonna go with pixels for this particular button because I want to make sure it stays exactly the same size all the time, no matter what, uh, what the screen is doing. Okay, so let's save our changes and test them so far. I can click this Live View button. Um, now it allows me to interact with the app just as a user would, so I can hover over that button, see it change color, but nothing happens when I click it because I haven't connected the button to anything yet. So let's, let's exit Live View and create a window for this button to open. Over here, uh, I have the page pane. I can switch to the window version and you can add new pages, new windows. I'm gonna add a new window. Window is kind of like a splash screen or a pop-up window. And this one, you know, it's pre-configured with some widgets. We've got two text widgets and an image widget. I'll select the image and we'll select an image to add to it. So I could, I could get that image from a URL. This time I'm going to upload one from my desktop. 
And you know, I can change the size, I can edit the text, I can, I, I, I'm gonna worry about all of that later. Right now, I, I'm mainly concerned with connecting that button to the window. So, it will go back to the page so I can select the button and set the link for the button. Oh, there's all sorts of things I can link to. I will choose the window that I just made. So now when we go into Live View, I click the button, a window appears. Great. Um, the next widget I want to add is a list widget. I have to turn off Live View to add new widgets. Go back to that insert widget pane. We'll add the list. Great. I have to uh, select a template. Um, and a list widget is uh, data-driven, so you populate it with attributes from a feature layer. So before I can continue, I have to select some data to populate it. So here's the select data pane. We saw that earlier when we added the map, and the map is already there. I'll expand the map and find this Pink Lakes layer. That's the point layer that's all over the map. So now I have inserted that point layer data into our list, and I can start to configure the items inside the list. I'll start with the image here. Now, I want each list item to have a different image, so I will click this dynamic tab. And I will get the URLs for the images from an attribute in that feature layer. Now, I made this data. Uh, we'll, we'll go take a look at that attribute table over here. I made sure that there was a field called picture, and I populated it with URLs to pictures of the lakes. So I can choose that picture attribute right now. Um, and now I have uh, a different picture for every lake on the map. Similarly, I can choose different attributes to populate this text, like the, the lake's name, and I've got a note field in there. So now our list has pictures and information about each item on the, on the map. So next, I wanted to show you how to change the layout for different screen sizes, which is one of the primary features of ArcGIS Experience Builder. So you know, this app, it looks great on this desktop screen, full size, um, but how is it going to behave on a tablet or on a phone? So we can use these buttons at the top to preview different screen sizes, make sure that our design works well uh, on any device. And if it doesn't work well, you can customize for these different sizes. For example, in this app, I really, I just don't think there's enough room to include the list. So I will click custom. Now I can uh, design the layout for mobile devices independently of the layout for larger screens. So I'll click that list. I'm not going to delete the list uh, because that would delete it from all versions of this app. Instead, I will click this button. It's called Move to the Pending List. Now, the list still exists on the large screen version. It still exists on the tablet version, but it is gone from the mobile version. I'm also going to move this button down so we can actually click it. So this app is clearly not finished yet, uh, but we don't have time to do that today, so I'm going to skip ahead to the final product over here. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see it. What I hope that I have conveyed with this demo is that Experience Builder allows for a lot of customization with your layout. Uh, you can really make the app look and behave however you want. Um, what that means, though, is that it's kind of a complex application, and learning to control the layout does take a bit of time. So my advice for you, if you are trying to make a layout with Experience Builder, well, first, I will, uh, I will echo Jim Meachin. Ooh. Oh, no. Um, it's easier if you draw it out on paper first and before you start moving around in the software. My second piece of advice is to use this outline list. It's in the page pane, and um, I find it very, very helpful to pause constantly as I'm working on my layout to reacquaint myself with this list, I'll make sure I understand what the structure of the app is. So for example, in this particular app, I can see that I've got a button, I've got a text widget, which turns out to be the title, so I'm going to rename that so I know what it is next time. Oops, 
misspelled it, but you'll forget that. Um, we have the list widget and all of the things inside it. And all of these widgets are nested inside of the map widget. They don't have to be, I could move them outside of the map. In this particular app, doesn't matter that much. However, it often does matter what is nested inside of what, um, especially when you are trying to configure sizes and positions. Uh, so I do recommend keeping an eye on the outline pane, understanding the structure, understanding what's nested inside of what. It makes the whole process a lot smoother. So that concludes my short tour of ArcGIS Experience Builder. I recommend um, you check out this learn path, try ArcGIS Experience Builder. It has a lot of great learning resources. Um, for example, it does have the tutorial series for the demo that I just showed today with a lot more detail than I was able to cover in this short time. And there are two learn lessons. There is design a layout for a thematic map in ArcGIS Experience Builder. And there is get started with ArcGIS Experience Builder. So these are both detailed step-by-step -step instructions. They're kept up to date. Um, so if you want to learn how to make uh, web map, custom web map layouts with ArcGIS, I recommend you start right here. Thank you.